Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Rock and Beards podcast. It's episode 39. You changed up the emphasis. It's your boy HSR. It's up, this it's Sid. guy, Sid. Yeah, him. So, uh, first of all, if you don't care about any of what I'm about to say in the description, you can jump ahead and click to whatever part of the review you care the most about hearing. On that note, we're going to talk a little bit about a contest we're putting together called The Grind with 1,000 subscribers because we're under 1,000 subscribers and we oh, want to get there oh, by like the oh, new maybe. year. Woo! So here's what's going to happen. If you subscribe to the channel, you like the video, and then you comment related to either the review or the album, you are eligible to win some money and then a custom request, some Amazon money. And uh, first place will get $100 of Amazon money, plus they can request something like an album or a movie, and we'll review it with the shortest possible delay. Second place will get $50, and third place will get 25 And yeah. All in USD. Well, or your local currency, and we'll figure something fair out for you. One million yeni. Depending on where you are, that could be a thing. So um, on that note, let's talk a bit. Oh, one more thing about the contest is for every video that you go back on our channel and you like and you comment and you show some love, you get additional chances and opportunities to win. So today, we are going to be talking about an album that is so far out of my fucking scope of understanding that I'm a little bit nervous to do this review. It's a Bjork, 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 Utopia, and um, I can't even say her name correctly. It's already a terrible start. So, firstly, if you're one of those hardcore super fans out there, allow me to just present the fact that I know very little about her except what I read on Wikipedia very recently and proceeded to listen to this album. And that's my entire experience with her. And then I, I saw her accolades. I saw how well respected she is, how loved she is. And I'm, I just never listened before. It's, it's like it never encountered my musical sphere. So for me, this was one hell of an interesting experience of like hearing stuff that sounded like nothing I pretty much ever listened to before. So take everything I'm going to have to say on this review with a, a grain of salt. And it really was a learning experience for me. And it was a curiosity. Not that I know what the fuck I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, ditto. I mean, I've always, <laughs> I've always kind of known that like Bjork was a thing and I've seen her like get made fun of on Saturday Night Live and stuff. And I've also always kind of known that musicians or music critics really really like her but i've like never put on more than half a song i put on like half a song like when i was 17 and kind of went that's weird uh so yeah totally unqualified to do this review but we're gonna power through and just do it anyway so if you guys could just educate us in the comments and and like we're acknowledging that we are not prepared for this yeah but, we have no idea but on the same time i really fucking like the album so i'm also a little less nervous because it's really easy to talk about how you like stuff and get not hate in the comments so woot for liking this album spoiler alert and all but even like from the beginning right you look at this album cover and, and it's, it's like, like jigsaw meets bjork like that saw oh, yeah. mask and it's got this flute and it's just creepy, but also enthrallingly mystical at the same fucking time. Like, it's not the kind of creepy that leaves you, like, scared. It's just kind of weird, and you want to know more. It, well, at least that's what I... Th I stared at this cover for a minute, because it's... Again, even the cover, it's so different than, like, any of the covers I think we've really put on so far in terms of its style and and what it is so i mean except for the part where it's got no name and no logo and no explicit lyrical content thing even though she says fuck a few times well it also it's again it's just her face you know in her own artistic it's the same kind of thing marilyn manson did except marilyn manson's version of this is much more accessible and much more mainstream i guess because it's just him I mean, and like just the, the trench style coat of it all right but, like, for me, it's the style. I mean, you're right. The the actual, I mean, like, literally her makeup choices and clothing style and... Are very well represented yeah. on this cover. It's I, just, it's every, like, everything she does is just very out there. It's not, not to, like, hate at all. I like it. It's it, kind of like, it reminds me of those masks from, like, Masquerade Balls. Mm. You know, like, you go to those those old school balls, kind that Shakespeare would go to, probably, yeah. if he was invited. And it's, it does, it gives us, a, I don't know, it's an interesting feeling. And I love the title Utopia. 
Because who title. doesn't like to think about u- utopias? Uh-huh. And apparently her last album had a bit more of a dystopian feel as uh-huh. she was exploring the emotions related to her breakup of her last person. And this album's a little more optimistic than what I imagine the last one was. But I'm curious. So I can tell you one thing. When all said and done, I just want to know more about her. Like, I saw she dropped an album when she was 12 years old. But was she in a band then? I think she won a contest. I, again, I briefly looked this up, people. Okay. So I think she somehow got a, a contest record thing he came out. And then she was in some other band, the Sugar something, Sugar Cubes or something like that. Punk rock. And that I blew think. up right. over Europe, UK type thing. And then she made solo music. And here we are today talking about utopias, underqualified guys on a couch who don't listen to Bjork much in our lives. But now that might change. After also, this for moment. those of you who are missing, uh, missing Kristen, I told, I, I showed her a little bit of this last night as I was listening to it, and she was just kind of like, "Good luck with that." Yeah, um, she had things that prevented her from coming, the yeah. expressed desire to come back. So, woot. Um, I don't know. I don't have a lot more to say here. Uh, you wanna, you wanna uh, uh, rise in my senses? Um. So let me just start this off by saying this was weird. Weird <laughs> is not a bad thing. Don't take weird in it. Weird means it's unlike the norm, and the norm sounds a lot like a thing that I have listened to a lot in my life. And this broke all the rules and made its own thing over there on its own lane, and it's it's interesting. This track, conceptually, because I, I looked at the lyrics, I was like, Sid's a music guy. He can handle a lot of the music side of this album, I bet. I, I, it's dingly, and it's got <laughs> multiple layered <laughs> melodies and sounds put together in this optimistic feeling. As the song goes on, it kind of increases in passion to match what's being said. And I like the fact that it's got that heavy level of the- theatricalness. Like, weirdly enough, you don't have to, like, sometimes you have an album on and you got to play a video game. You know, it's not like the album enough doesn't engage you. It's just good music to do things with. This album, it's like you hit pause and you sit back. You're like, what the hell is this? And you get into that. I did. You might not. You might didn't, might not have. I got really into this shit. And this track is about like a kiss. Just one kiss. S- fucking five minutes of explosiveness and shit. J- like it starts with like just that kiss was all there is. Every cell of my body lined up for you. And like that. It's like the first kiss with this dude that she's met. And like... She goes on to describe shit like how their mixtapes are crossing and this and that. And the music's all flipping around and she's like... Is this the one where she's like, we're just two music nerds? No, no, that's not that one. Okay, sorry. That comes next. My B, internet. It's okay. So, again, this is just about a fucking kiss and her body lighting up. And then it kind of like changes, right? And the music gives you this almost sense of insecurity as the song progressive. As he's saying shit like... Too keen, too seen, to be seen, am I keen or keen or not keen? And there's like a lot of that on this record. Which normally would really bother me, but I kind of get what she's doing here. You're getting this like stream of conscious experience of like her entire first kiss with this guy's experience down to as it starts like enlightenment and everything like fucking hits you up like, you know, you're excited and it's hormones and adrenalines and then as it's happening you start wondering was this too soon too eager to this and like just the flood of doubt and insecurity that comes along with those heightened senses i was this just one really like, got to holden well most of this album actually hit me in that way because what i realized is the magic of what this woman does with her songwriting is to capture emotion and like we j- this is going to sound strange to, like, most people, but we just did the little peep thing because, like, we did it. You can click that if you care. But it wasn't because they're stylistically the same person. But one of our commentary on it was how peep didn't care about being a good rhymer. He cared about expressing his emotion and using the music as a vessel to, to convey it. And Bjork does, like, that. I mean, obviously, she's, like, exceptionally next-level talented at this shit. Like, I... It's it's beautiful. This, this and also exceptionally next level weird. Like, 
do not go into Lil Peep from here expecting to hear the same type of thing. Oh, no, no, no. That's like... Although that's equally weird in another direction. But no, that like there's just a huge difference. Like they're not in the same league. Like Bjork deserves all the praise I saw online. And I'm one song in. And I already felt like this. And I'm like, look, I don't I don't know. I mean I was blown a fucking way. Because it's so not my kind of music. But I don't care who you are. This is like a movie. This is like an experience. You're maybe not going to go listen to Bjork as your regular jam, but you know what? Maybe if you can connect to it in some way. I don't know. I connected to the sense. Like, it made me think back to all of my first kisses in the moment. You know, like, yeah. and it was so universally done where it's not, yeah, she's a woman, but, like, it's not really written for anyone. It's just expressing a universal sentiment effectively. Yeah. I gave this a four and a half. I'm just going to drop the grade now so you can go talk for a minute because, like, it's not really something I could listen to all the time, every day kind of thing, but holy shit, was it exceptionally good. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked it a lot. It, it definitely intrigued me. I liked, uh, I, I like a lot, on a lot of this record, I'm going to say that I liked how the music encapsulates kind of the feel of the title. So this one is called A Rise in My Senses, and that's really what it feels. It feels like the senses are waking up. It's kind of morning, maybe, you know, you, your eyes are opening and there's like sunshine. And I'm not even talking about the lyrics because I didn't even step into the lyrics on this one because, I mean, there, there was definitely a lot of repetition, a lot of alliteration. I got um, notes on every track. He's got notes on that shit. Uh, I mean, a lot of it to me, it was like, it was a hit or miss. Like, I, I, I liked the effect of some of it. Some of it I felt like she went on for too long. Like, you know, on, on BoJack... Like, the first time you hear there's nothing funny about stealing a meal from Neil McBeal, the Navy SEAL, like, that was hilarious. And then just, in the I third season, they just, do that joke just, like, a thousand times more, and it's like, all right. I actually really liked it. No, sorry, I just watched that episode That's one of my yesterday. favorite episodes. And uh, it was a little drawn to death, but if you pace it out, it's pretty good. But that's what, it, like, when they did that, that joke is fucking hilarious, and that's one of my favorite episodes. But in the third season, where I'm the saying, alliteration the is just season, going to, uh, to, like, ridiculous yeah. heights, and it's like, it's funny, but... It's a little much. Anyway, we'll get into that. But uh, on this, yeah, uh, I, I'm sorry, guys. I actually, this is the one song that I forgot to write notes about, so I'm kind of flying off the cusp here. Um, Bjork said there was lots of melodies interloped on top of each other. That makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and drop a 4.5 on this one as well. Good intro, Bjork. All right. Um, let, let's talk about Blissing Me. So conceptually, this one fucked me up too. It is really, really good. And keep in mind, the sounds are all weird to me. Great weird. I'm, I'm into it because it's like, again, this movie. So the first track's about the first kiss. And then it starts off this one kind of like, I don't know if I wrote down the exact lyric, but basically she's thinking about that first kiss while she's kind of like in a plane flying away and then life's kind of going on in their distant places and then they start texting a bunch we find out that they're two music nerds and they connect through music sending one, right. each other mp3s then he kind of asks her to wait for him but she kind of falls for his songs and his interests so it's almost like they're sending each other their music i don't know if it's actually what they wrote or just their interest or hey i feel like this today and you can almost picture like that's a dope way to, to me as a, as a guy who loves music as much as I mean, I love music enough to do this is like fucking 40 hours a week, like for free. <laughs> like I love music <laughs> that much. The idea of connecting to like people through songs is just magical to me. It sounds like an ethereal way. Most of my early dating experiences, we sit in front of a YouTube computer and trade songs for three hours while getting to know each other. And that's my idea of a great fucking time. That's still my dating experience. Yeah, I'm just not dating, so... Um, Hi, Bonnie. Yeah, she's a summer. <laughs> but even with her, same thing. Like She got me into jazz a lot more and made me listen to shit like The Temptations, and so much of my dating experience is what she's fucking describing. But she adds the extra layer of the fact that they're distant, she has to wait for this guy, they're basically communicating through text messaging and shit like that. Um... As the track gets on, it's like as her feelings start to, and she starts to like let her guard down and starts indulging these feelings, the music intensifies to go along with that, creating almost like you're at an opera in terms of like the feel of what's happening here. But she kind of holds back her feelings because she knows that she, like, when she sees him, she's going to give him, she can't like get too far into it. And then at the very end, like at the last line, 
like she kind of undermines the entire track right with the craziest lyric of did i just fall in love with love where she's kind of like holy shit you like and I, I always describe this sentiment as you fall in love with like the idea of who a person is rather than even knowing who the person is. And she's kind of acknowledging all of these feelings, this lust, this desire, this crazy connection, this this everything that she's put together. And again, this five minute experience at the very fucking end is like, but wait, wait, maybe it's not real. Right. And it's just so like honest and powerful and like like you can just tell when an artist is creating something like directly from their like directly from their heart and their emotions and shit like that pure almost like like the songwriting doesn't make sense in terms of rhyming structure and the, like it does this one's a little more structured but she doesn't care more. about that like she, like her lines if almost anybody did it in another genre of music every other critic would be being like fuck them they can't even rhyme but bjork is just like i don't need to rhyme i'll move you to fucking tears just saying shit and it it's like wow anyway well, but at the same time, like, you know, you feel it in her delivery. Like, you, you so feel much it. So much so. Um, the music in general on this record is very, very loose. Like, the, I, don't, I don't really think there's a meter. I could be wrong. Um, I used to spend time trying to count shit. I don't anymore. Because, you know, fuck it. Um, <laughs> but I really felt like this record is kind of like what tool is to metal fans like for people who don't like metal and who like intellectual music i guess like you would call because there's a lot of classical influence uh you hear a lot of um you know there's a lot of flutes there's a lot of harps mixed with a lot of um, I'm um just, can i just call it naturey sounds you can because there's definitely there's also a lot of samples of like birds chirping and like children laughing and like that kind of thing um mixed with the, these kind of these kind of uh Newer. Uh, may, may I just interject one crucial fact we missed that is worth mentioning, and it maybe should have made more sense. But she worked with collaborating artist Arca, who's a DJ who makes kind of these experiment. Well, I wouldn't say yeah, different different kinds of. I, I clicked on a few of his tracks. It was weird, non-standard electronic DJ music, so it was cool. But like, so that first track, the last one, Arrival of My Senses, like samples him and establishes like their creation. He had apparently jumped into the end of the process of the last album. Okay. And so they had done everything on this album together in terms of the musical side and, and whatnot. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay. Well, that makes sense because there's definitely also, I was going to say this, next or like on top of or mixed in with those those kind of classical uh influences there's there's a lot of disparate like there's a lot there's a lot of really industrial sounding samples a lot of you know like like mm. noisy sounding snares and 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 hi hats and 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 really distorted tom hits and things like that uh that that kind of drive the rhythm but kind of don't like they they also kind of just punch and accent uh certain passages and certain transitions uh this particular song and again, I am totally unqualified to be reviewing this kind of music. Before we there, give a grade. There is also a very horny video for this song. Um, That's a good way to put it. <laughs> I mean, good, man, she looks great for 52 and all that. Like, And I am not. I don't mean horny in the sense that it's like a porn video. Like, no, it's very artful and it's very tastefully it's, it's done, but it's like basically just her feeling her herself like, up. Her, dis like, discovering herself again. It, it really feels almost like empowering. Yeah. Like, in that kind of sense of horny. Not like in the creepy where two men on a couch calling her horny. I read Playboy for the articles, but like, um, uh, it's just okay. So at about three minutes and thirty three seconds, and I'm not sure if this was this was done deliberately. I feel like it might have been. Uh, the song gets really, really chaotic. Like it's it's been kind of a melange of 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 different sounds and different samples over this kind of like harpy. Uh, loose very loose to interject that's about when she starts letting her guard down and right embracing these emotions and 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 it gets really really chaotic and I, I felt like it almost got too chaotic like she didn't need to go that far to, to to convey the message and on the sense of that like I felt like it was an experiment that didn't work that could almost parallel the lyrics uh, like this venture was an experiment that didn't work but it was an experiment and I'm happy I did it type thing but it just it didn't work as well for I me. Loved it. Uh, this one also felt the most like a single. Like it felt like like it was it was the one that was that was pulled to be the tightest. 
uh, compared to the rest of the album, which is a lot more loose and a lot more experimental, but in in very um, sparse, in much more of a sparse presentation. Uh, if any of that made any sense, 3.8 on 5. Yeah, I gave this a 5. You gave it a 5. You know why? Because I think it really isn't about like regular songwriting and it's about raw emotional explosions and that chaos is the right emotion to I describe thought, with those lyrics i thought i thought you were gonna say something about it being right out the gate yeah Love from... i don't like this one as much um not because of the reasons he doesn't, but for me it's a lot of i don't know all of your reasons but at least one but like the music like underneath it was way calmer and it fit the song and it made sense but it was a little harder to dig plus it's like six minutes and 34 seconds and when you're in that range if you don't really like the underlying music quite as much uh, by the end of the song even with the diversities and growths and shit she kind of does which isn't as much here it's a little hard to love a six and a half minute song be that as it may Totally fits the story, right? Because now she, in the previous track, has kind of been like, I understand, like, I'm feeling things again, love. I'm not sure. Like, clearly she's discovering what love is again. And this is, like, the gate of, like, her heart to what leads into the next track is we'll get there. Spoiler alert, it's called Utopia. So it's, like, the hey, gate to Utopia. you can't do that because now we have to do the next track because no, you no, said we're it. Fine. We're fine. Oh, my God. Fucked so, up. Then, By the um, laws of YouTube physics. Okay. Then, like, basically, she, she kind of goes through this sentiment and her heart's kind of not healed and it's transformed into, like, a gate of love. And and I just wanted to say I'm a bit jealous of how effectively she can roll her R's. I've been trying for the last 10 years and I can't even do that. And then, then she kind of is like, I'll care for you, I'll care for you a whole bunch. And then, like, she goes and admits that she's been, like, she uses light in a prism of light as an interesting metaphor to describe how she's broken into a bunch of little pieces and shattered and shit. And then it's kind of like, if you care for me, I'll care for you. And then um, she kind of finds her acceptance again. And, and, then, and then it's, she can care for you and shit like that. And I know it's, it's maybe super, like, repetitive, but these subtle differences are interesting because I've, like been in moments where i've dated people who have kind of gone through that process in front of me and i've been on the other end of it so it felt a little close to home and personal hearing it like if you were to do like a breakdown of this process she did it pretty fucking well and it doesn't have a lot of lyrics but it still manages to convey in in like two lines what some people can't in entire songs and that's fucking impressive to me as a writer i think her choice of words is great the subtlety she did is, is great, but I had a lot of trouble with the length and the repetition and, and the slowness and the, cause I just got two tracks of some crazy explosions of sound and interesting. And then this one takes you down a minute, which is fine, but it was long. And I mean, I think the thing about this one is like, if you are looking for something deep, dark and Gothic, this is perfect for you. If you're looking for almost anything else, this one might turn you off a little bit because it is really long and it's pretty dense, uh, even though just again, because of the very loose rhythms and and the the, the kind of the almost improvisational uh, delivery of the vocals, the repetition on this one I f was was what I was talking about when I f said I felt like it was a little bit much like the I care for you a thousand times. And, you gotta keep uh, and again, mind. yes, each, he, each of those sections. All right, at least a minute of yeah. I care for you. And um, I, I also felt like conceptually, uh, like even, like it, it just, it doesn't encapsulate the the title and, and, and the idea of the song with the same focus that a lot of the other songs on this record do. Hmm. Um, I disagree. It's totally the gate of your heart. Fine, but I, I, just... I didn't get the imagery the same way. And, you know, spoiler alert, like the next one... Uh, and that's that's just me maybe it's, it's like a just to like place it together right like this is the pre this is like the the prelude to the next song right it's kind of like she she's first she has the kiss and realizes this exists in her then in the next track she's kind of like okay 
texting, learning, like okay, on, whatever. On most of the then others, in this one, it's like this finality of it can be a real thing before she can accept and move on to it. So it, it really is a gate song. Okay. What I'm, what I'm saying is on most of the others, I didn't necessarily need to go full on into the lyrics to get the sense of what okay. the song is and the emotion that it's trying to convey and, and just just the very... Pres- I, and, and on this one, I felt like... It's 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 very dense, but it's it's also so, very very meandering. I feel like it's um, the beginning and the end that really sparked my imagination for this one. Something that wasn't mentioned is, it kind of sound, and this is just my imagination, like an elven forest where a bunch of little gibberishy sounds were played out, and so my sci-fi geek in me was just running with that shit, and so I was already picturing like this mythical forest, and then she comes to like this stargate looking thing in my head. That represented her heart and it was that and then at the end and then it was at the beginning like just those two parts and that's it so for me it kind of added that little extra element that gave me that i mean that makes sense because in my head before i saw her she was galadriel from lord of the rings singing okay um so you know for for the nerd and all of us i give um, this a 4.25 i gave it a 3.8 i'm also i'm, I'm not a fan like it I, I agree with you that it does. It, it's it's very reminiscent of, of, of film soundtrack style music. Uh, and on a lot of these, I really appreciate the storytelling aspect of the music. Like I've said uh, on this one, I, I just felt like it's not the type of movie I would watch. <laughs> I kind of like went with the concepts pretty dope and the music is extremely talented, even though I don't fully get if it's good or bad within itself. I don't have the references to compare this song to. So Think Enya. I literally listen to like three Enya songs so it's like I I don't have the frame of reference it's way excellently composed and I can see the brilliance in it so 4.25 but I don't like it as much so that's the Bjork rating system like it's it's a special rating system for this review it doesn't make utopia well it does for me Utopia. So I dug this track again. We're right back up into the, oh, this is cool again. Like, I could have dealt without the last track because it almost put me to sleep. This one, though, woke me up. First of all, they're using, like, birds and and other shit as part of the beat, like, effectively. Like, you listen to the structuring of how they put it in, and and it's like instead of drum snares, they they found nature sounds and, and made it work. Because this track's about a utopia, and and this song to me has a double entendre message. On the one hand, it's save the fucking planet, it's not too late, you fucking morons. On the other hand, it's about her personal utopia, where she's like describing how inside of herself there's this place, and and like the birds and the the are making natural music, and the flutes are there, and then she kind of brings it in with utopia. It's not elsewhere. Let's purify, which is interesting, right? Like it's here. We have to make it better. And then the beat picks up and those melodies are all intoxicating and shit. I described it in my notes as meditation relaxing music because it sounds like all those meditation music things if you like go on any of those apps. And then someone's like assigned her to protect this lantern and spread the message. And I've always taken like like that this little light of mine him and how it's like the light is used to represent like your message and stuff. So somebody's like guarding the natural light by like, I don't know, then like being the vessel to convey the right message. And I I respect it because she's clearly taken that on and taken it super seriously. And then uh, then all of a sudden we get to like the end of this song where her instinct is like you got to get out of here it's fucked up you got to leave because both her utopia and our planet are polluted and the toxins and all of the bad stuff is there she even goes as far as to be like let's purify the toxicity which i thought was cool because i thought a system of a down but like and the idea here is instead of running away from shit or pretending like it's too late or it's too fucked up we have to like actively take control of the situation and purify the bad so on the planet and in ourselves and that's pretty dope as a message and the music conveys this journey with her and it sounds so like like she clearly loves nature it's not my utopia but her utopia sounds pretty fucking swell mm-hmm. i mean like you get the, the i really like this one too you get the sense like you get the imagery of what a classic kind of utopia is supposed to look like uh again with the birds chirping and the children laughing you know you kind of get the image of like a, a beautiful park uh everyone's frolicking um there's this the squirrels are kind of like in a disney movie you know the squirrels are coming up and instead of stealing your muffins they're like high-fiving you or whatever yeah um the music it was almost like vivaldi like very very light and fluttery 
um, uh, a lot of flutes going on. And I liked how when, when the percussion came in, uh, it was almost like, like it kind of reminded me of the vibe of like a 90s hip hop track. Yes. Um, it, it was dope. Yeah, it was very cool. Uh, I gave this one a five on five, actually. Like, I, I will listen to this one multiple times over. I gave it a four and a half on five. Um, it took a while to get going. Like the second the hip hop drums kicked in, I was sold a hundred. Like this is but... like this is what I'm talking about. Where I say I I get the imagery through the music. Like I don't need the lyrics Agreed. even. Like it 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 just the emotion and everything hits me the even, way it's supposed to hit you me. Even feel this urge to go like recycle or something, listening yeah. to just the beat. <laughs> like you can feel the save the planet vibe mixed with it. I, it's dope, but I still give it a four and a half. It is definitely not something i could like this whole sound is hard to revisit every day like it's brilliant it's excellent it's super fucking dope but um my my, my uh, <laughs> utopia but like my uh my my body memory kind of gears me away from a five on that one i wrote a fuck ton of notes uh, this song was enthralling i so this is kind of like it does, it's apparently a counter to a 10-minute depressing song she wrote on the last album. Okay. Because it's basically oh, 10 minutes. And um, this song is, like, addressing entering her 50s. As right. she, this is, like, from her in interviews. So it's, like, the next phase of her life. And then in every verse of this track, she presents, like, an insecurity or something that makes her feel kind of anxious. <laughs> and then, like, responds to that verse with this line about how her body memory kicks in and, and everything's okay again. And then a secondary coupling lyric that fit the previous verse. So it's cool. And it makes the length of the song less boring. And almost like one of those, like almost like a fable being told through like like this crazy song. And as she's doing it, the music just evolves to completely fit the specific motif of the six subjects she explores on this track. So like in the first verse, um, she, she almost feels overwhelmed by, like, nature and shit, which I don't know exactly if I'm taking that one right. But then, like, she her body memory kicks in, and she's like, yeah, it's cool. There's nothing to be scary about here. Life is okay. We got this. And then verse 2 has her wrestling with her destiny, and then she literally has, like, Wolverine noises start howling as she mentions the word Wolverine, which was fucking cool because, like, you just you're not expecting it. And it doesn't leave until the end of that section. Right. And then hook two kicks in, only she kind of like surrenders to the future. And then the beat goes fucking nuts. And like verse three adds in a choir of like female voices as she kind of goes into some love talk and, you know, love, blah, 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 response to it. Then in the fourth verse, it's a bunch of male choir voices harmonizing as she's talking about sex migrating into female voices as she's responding to it in the hook, which is fucking cool. Then, um, Five is kind of like I'm ditching the city life and I'm going back to my roots in the nature because this is where I belong and this is where I feel comfortable. And and that was cool. And then um, in the sixth one, it's all about her custody battle with her ex-husband, which definitely okay. is interesting and it kind of like falls up with that. And then she just like ends it with this complete one-off chorus. And it's like, then my body memory kicks in. All bosoms and embraces, oral, anal entrances, enjoy the satisfaction of the really? other is growing. That is, is that how really the song ends. Yeah. And I love it. It To me, like she's saying, listen, I'm just going to take it all and enjoy life as it comes and accept that this is where I'm at. And, and like, I guess she, like, she was very, like, in all senses, she's going to literally enjoy whatever's coming her way. But, uh, and, like... Now I can laugh about it because... Cause sex is on the table she brought it up and then but i feel like it's more about accepting it in a graphic way but to describe all parts of life to the graphic detail of acceptance and i took that like parallel from what she did and it was fucking cool and i don't know man i was so impressed with this track i'm bl this is possibly the coolest song on the album to me because like I said previously, when you get into the long song, it's going two ways. I'm either really going to like it or I'm really not. And yeah. this blew me out of the water. I was hooked to the very fucking end. It's a, it's a five. Like, there's no other grade for this track for me. Okay. I mean, I, I definitely didn't think it was a boring track. Like, de it definitely keeps you engaged and intrigued all the way through. There's a lot going on. 
Um, in terms of the production aspect, like this is this is a lot of this section is kind of like that trippy. Uh, if you've ever been to a rave or like an underground DJ show, like mm. a, a lot of drum and bass, a lot of a lot of trance, some side trance, like a lot of that going on. This is this is the EDM that you don't hear in the mainstream nightclubs. You know what I mean? Uh, but weirder, like it's weirder than that. You can't really dance to this because there is a meter, but there isn't type thing. Um, uh, yeah, I missed. I totally missed that whole oral anal thing at the end there. Kind of, it's I'm the very upset about like that. last 30, 40 seconds. Like, kinda, it ends with that. Kind of, so you can go that. back to it. I will go back to it because that's all I care about now. Um, no, it, 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 the song <laughs> I'm has kidding, so I'm much value. No, it's a really, it's a really <clears throat> cool song. It's a really cool song. Like Holden said, you know, a long song, it can, it can go a couple of ways. And this one, this one is very, you know, it's, it doesn't feel like any part of the song was ignored. Like it's, it's all very carefully crafted and 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 put together and and composed. And the deliveries again are very on point. Uh, really cool instrumentation. It makes me want to be in my fifties. Like it makes being in my fifties sound kind of fun. It kind of it's yeah it's it's that sense of like again this is this is one where you you feel that sense of like body memory where like you maybe you pick up the guitar after after three years of not playing it and you get that sense of like oh shit I can I, play I get that experience every now and again literally yeah. um, like it's 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 literally what people say like it's like riding a bike uh, on on any given subject that's that's the kind of the message I got from this song where like you just kind of get back up and do things and if you knew how to do them you will still know how to do them and you'll get that sensation of like it's almost pride but at the same time it's familiarity and it's comfort too. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that the music can really bring a lot of those feelings, you know, without, because I mean, she's she's Icelandic. I think her 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 grasp of the English language isn't necessarily perfect either. Yeah, um, I I just noticed there were almost some de- it almost felt like deliberate grammatical errors. Like she knew she could make it proper English and said, "No, nah, this is how I say it." And and usually in a review, I will I will I will say, "Why don't you just write in your own language?" But this one almost transcend like this record almost transcends language. Uh, it does transcend language. Like it's it's a universal language of music, which I think really Bjork is is about. I gave this one a four point five, uh, just because there there were a couple of sections that that almost lost me, but you know for a, for a ten minute song that's bound to happen. Um, but I, I liked it a lot, and it's you know a lot of this it's it's very if you're into like long weird songs that you need to sit down and take a real listen to a couple of times and think about this one is really cool. Yeah. Um, and it's and it's and it features creatures. When I hear so here we have a song where Bjork is out and about, and she starts noticing this guy who goes into her, the same record store as her lover, about the same height as her lover, and she kind of notices that, wow, I'm like five minutes away from falling in love here. That's weird. And then she describes his beard and a few other characteristics about the guy. And I was like, whoa, that's crazy. And then like she can almost Google love based on this series of how she's broken her partner into a bunch of characteristics and descriptive details. And it's crazy how when she sees people now, as long as she sees the right number of characteristics that match this person that she loves, that's what love is. And I mean, this was this was fucking interesting. Like, I mean, the song doesn't have a lot more than that. It's really just kind of like she has broken love down into a series of details. And if we think about how we approach relationships and dating and that shit now, and you actually ask people about who they want to date, it really just often is about this like series of statistics. Like, I want a girl who's this and that, then this and that. Not really about I want a person who completes me or some of that shit that maybe love should be based on. And so I fucking really dug the concept of it. It's um, it's definitely an five minutes feels short after nine minutes and forty seven mm-hmm. seconds. So it felt kind of nice to get back to like a reasonable long song length. And um, and it's not even five minutes. It's four and a half or four fifty, which is just about five. Just about, but a little shorter than than even the songs that came before Body Memory. And like the beats, so... kind of all based on these like whirly wind sounds and like vocal samples kind of swirled all together like it, it's almost ethereal and i like how it's it's different like i like how we're six tracks in and she's managed to albeit keeping a very similar sound it's always a little bit different too like she's not repetitious like this woman no. fully understands music to a point where i may never ever reach in my entire life if i study forever and 
it shows in the level of complexity behind like i i was starting to wonder like how do her, how do you compose this how do you sit there in the studio like how much time does it take combing over this 5 minute experience until it's just perfect like those were the kinds of things i started wondering at this point yeah uh i like this one <laughs> i i get the ch the title gave me a little chuckle i was like ah, creature creature features features, features creatures, creatures i get it um it definitely I, I I envisioned like the shadowy spot, the shadowy alleyway in between like two Transylvanian castles, and Dracula flies in for the first time and transforms from a bat into like good evening. Um, that's you know we're talking about how how this this record really sounds like film soundtracks, and this mm. one sounds specifically like the soundtrack to a to a creature feature. Um, oh. I didn't know that was a thing, so I guess that is cleverer than I was aware of. You didn't realize that creature features were an actual... Nope, never thought, because I was caught up on the fact of the other, the features creature left me with enough to think about. Okay. Uh, anyway, feature creatures, sorry. She's, yeah. she, she does the R rolling thing. I, I can't even touch uh, it. It's so expert. Quite well in this one. I don't um, think I should learn Icelandic. I really think that's 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 more or less all. I, the, the fade out is cool at the end. I liked it, but yeah, I gave it a four and a half. Monster movies. I also gave it a four and a half. It's well done. Um, as the album goes on, I feel like my notes got shorter and shorter because a lot of what I would use to describe the songs is very similar. Not not because they are similar, but because I'm too ignorant to properly articulate how dingly sounds are different from whirly sounds and i don't even know how to properly describe this shit anyway like we don't we we, we don't know it but we're giving it a courtship yeah in the dark, but what... so i feel like bjork here wanted to write a track about this like hookup culture that we're all into and the way because she's probably single and dating now and or i got the impression from this album that that's where she's at and she's met a few people here and there and like the first verse, it's kind of like he says no to her, who in turn says no to him. And it's interesting. It's kind of like, yeah, we're also frivolous. We just say yes and no to people as we please. And then she kind of like meets a dude and she bangs him and then wonders if it's going to like change for the worse. And I, I wrote this down because it was just interesting the way she described shit. Like, I then upturned a green eyed giant who upturned and entered me. Will we stop seeing what unites us, but only what differs? Sex. And it's like, will sex change shit now that it's happened? And it's just, the way she just word shit is so fucking wonky. Or like, mm. as the song progresses, it starts to kind of go into the fact that we're all creating these like body histories of all the people we've slept with and shit. And it's got stuff like the ghosts of old loves hovering around his orifices, his orifice. And it's like... She really likes the uh, orif orify. And it's, but it's like the way she describes it, it's just so blunt. It's like blunt in a way I could never think to be blunt. And um, I kind of like how it kind of ends on this, like everyone has their own tales, our bodies don't really forget it. And then it, it kind of just soothes into these super calm nature sounds and pleasant vibes as the song just kind of fades off to the end. And uh, I, I dug it. I gave this another five because this beat is the hype as fucking beat. This, this beat is fires, man. <laughs> like, it comes in and it's crunked out on this off rhythm, but it fits right. And it's got these flutes and shit and these great drum patterns under it. And you could almost picture, like, anybody start rapping on this shit. And then Bjork comes in and does better than any of us could have ever done rapping on this shit. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, no, I, I really dug this one. It's very quick paced, very flighty. Uh... In, in the most real sense of the word, you know, the flutes of like, it's, it's, it's cool. Um, a lot of that, a lot of that break beat, uh, kind of, kind of industrial style again. And this one is, is another one of the more solid, uh, rhythms that you can kind of grab onto on the record as opposed to something more, more, uh, I think it's my favorite one. Um, this, I, I still like Utopia a little more just because Utopia is still just perfectly... And this one, you know what? Like, courtship, you, you feel... This one sounds like courtship. It sounds like dating. It sounds like butterflies in the stomach and, and you know, birds are chirping. And, it gives you almost a medieval um, feel. Yeah, a, lo movies. a lot of this has a very medieval feel. Um, but not like, like like on the gate, it was a very gothic medieval feel. And this one's just, just a much more lighthearted, uh, quick-paced rump through the romps. Yeah. Of, of of romping, um, 
That sounds like a way Bjork would have phrased that line. Yeah. Uh, hashtag romps. I give this um, a five. I give it a 4.5. I love this track a lot. It was really cool. I could really see myself bumping it again and again. Uh, and if and if you don't, I guess that would be your loss. Yeah. <laughs> Here we have Loss, and uh, this track kind of captures her healing process through Loss. Like, the album kind of takes a, a shift here, I find, and it's not necessarily for the better, in my opinion. A lot of the, the next few songs are going to address the specific kind of situation where her, her and her husband split up, and they've been going through a custody battle for their 15-year-old daughter and a few other shits. So she clearly has a lot of reasons to write a song like this. And I don't want to sound insensitive to her situation or have people be like, well, you didn't do research or anything. Well, no, I did do the research, actually, for once, because I was afraid of you Bjork fans. But um, you're, a, you're a terrifying group, apparently. Well, any group that loves an artist is terrifying to me as a reviewer so far. But uh, I appreciated this song actually so what i'm about to say about like the subject matter it's not for this track it's for later on but there's almost like this pivotal theme like switch at the halfway point where she's discovered love and everything's good and she's dating and now she's like considering her her loss right and it goes back and she she now goes right about this dude and and it's interesting like she has loss of faith just ignite survivors they stared out straight into the eyes i forgive the past is bondage freedom aphrodisiac and it's like, <laughs> I, cool, I love actually. the language. I love these kinds of correlations because this whole track is like how she had to experience the pain. She didn't just bury the emotions and let it harden her soul like so many. She went through it. She dealt with it. And by doing so, got this like liberation, as she put it, freedom aphrodisiac. I think it appears more than once. Um, and it, it kind of has some like confusion and struggle in this otherwise hopeful beat that like, it works proper. Like on the rhythm side, it's very chaotic on the melody side. It's very calm and like uplifting and given the subject matter and the confusing nature of, of this healing process, it, it really made a, a shit ton of sense to me. So here, like I feel her pain. I feel her recovery happen. It's like seven, just under seven minutes long. And it's fucking really, really solid. For me, it's a four and a half on five. I really, really like this track. I really think it's got a lot to say. And I could see how that if I'm ever heartbroken in the future, I'm like even pining a little bit to this song, like just wailing out with Bjork as I heal kind of thing. Yeah, um, again, very, 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 she's very good at, at capturing the emotion she wants to capture and and encapsulating it and and giving you those images through the music. Uh, the lyrics on this one I, I also were was was particularly uh, smitten with. Uh, they really, you know, sh she goes on a whole thing towards towards the middle, towards the end of the song. I don't I don't remember exactly what she says, but she it's it's another rep it's another um, run of repetition, but it really, really captures that feeling of loss uh, really, really well. Um, other than the fact that Microsoft Word told me that the title of the song was spelled wrong and I agree. Um, <laughs> and it was bothering me the whole time I was listening to this. Uh, this was, this was a really good one. Um, I just, I had one problem and, you know, the song gets kind of chaotic in its, in its disparate parts. Uh, and I really like that. I, I, cause it really comes together. Like, like the, the, the separate parts kind of either drop off or become unison right at the end. And, and you get this really satisfying sense of completion, but then it kind of breaks apart again. And I felt like that wasn't really necessary. And I know on a conceptual level, this, this song is about loss, so to have things break apart again makes sense. And there's like just, sirens and stuff that get interloped at the end of the song. Yeah, but I just, feel, I just <laughs> felt like like musically there was a missed opportunity to have, to have things wrap up. And life doesn't wrap up nicely. I get it. Get, I, get what, I get what that's about. But I, I, I miss that, that sense of completion as, as a listener. Um, and again, this is all very personal. A lot of what I'm saying on this record is very personal. I'm not fully equipped to, re to review this record properly. No, but, but, I mean, you're allowed to be like, I, I I thought that the end was the reason it doesn't get a five. It went on for a little bit more than it should have. Than it have. needed to. Um, and that's that's it. And, you know, I, I won't say that. I won't say that a lot. Uh, this is the really the first record that I've 
ever reviewed, I think, that I really felt out of my depth and out of my scope because it's not any any specific well, it, it kind of it's just like it's experimental music yeah. is, is how i would label this i think is, is but so... like in a popular sense right because bjork still qualifies as like a mainstream name like she's a household name she so it's it's weird there's that dichotomy of like there's these expectations on, on her to release weird music um at the same time i feel like if it got too weird she might be shunned a little bit like this record never gets but I think it's because weird, she has you know I mean? a good handle on what she wants. Yeah, and, and she she does have a very good handle on melody as well. Like she she understands uh, she, she understands the importance of of accessible melodies, and you know, in even though they are laid very strangely on top of each other, uh, most just, of the time they still end up being, you know, very familiar. There's there's callbacks to to to, to like like I said, Vivaldi. There's callback there's callbacks to a. Uh, um, 90s hip hop. There's industrial. There's 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 even some pop hooks here, but uh, it's it's none of those things, which is why yeah. which is why it's so interesting and so strange to review. Uh, I gave this track a four on five. By the way, I'm I'm kind of going on a tangent now. Maybe. Which is which is fair, you know. I said just sue me. This is my least favorite song on the album, and I've noticed that when I start up a section like that, I don't say as much. So don't be too shocked if I don't say as much. I give it a four because even the worst thing on this album, from my perception, is exceptionally fucking talented. It's like, it's like comparing Eminem to Eminem as opposed to comparing Eminem to everyone else is what I'm doing at this point. I'm comparing New He's York comparing to Eminem New York. To Eminem. Right? No, no. But like, <laughs> but like, sorry, I said Revival, that backwards. Hashtag twenty fifth. Hashtag December fifteenth. Well, we'll see. No, December fifteenth is the physical copy is the current rumor, but the digital release is still the eighth. But you might need Amazon Prime exclusive. Not related to Bjork, but what I was trying to say is when we've covered Eminem, often the, the, you're giving fours and shit, but it's because you just heard fives on this album, and this isn't a five by comparison to that standard, not right. compared to regular artists, because everything she's done here is so amazing in terms of compared to regular artists. But still... Fuck you, Drake. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I don't I don't like this track as much. And this is where she really goes into the custody battle and she's like, Look, sue me, take all my money, do what you want, but don't get in like the way of me being with my kid. You can't deny her where she comes from, who she is, blah blah blah. I don't actually know enough about like the story to to like know, but um it's like she's almost putting out this cry to break the cycle of malicious behavior between them for the sake of their daughter. So on the one hand, it's like, look, do what you have to do, but don't do this because our kid is involved and don't be like every other selfish fucking asshole parent in a divorce ever kind of thing. Think of them for once. Anyway, that's about the song. I gave it a four. The beat had nothing new for me to comment on. It's same kind of weirdness a little more with the chaotic drums kind of thing like we just had but yeah. less good and yeah i felt like this was the first time that that on on this record that she really was trying to sound angry um and i don't know that anger as a songwriter is a good look on her um because there's still you know the, the very ethereal very flighty very light-hearted uh kind of kind of flutes and stuff going on in the background it's it's a, it's a weird juxtaposition over this very serious subject matter that you can really you can really feel the subject matter is serious, but it's almost it's almost whiny in its delivery. Um, I felt like like desperate whiny though. Yeah, like, like not like, like emo whiny. Depending on your definition of emo and what you consider, uh, but I mean, like there there was some pitch pitch shifted uh, samples going on that were really cool. There was there was a lot of sliding going up and down octaves uh, that you could tell was was mechanical. Um, and there was some there was some foul language going on at the end there, kind of whisper that that felt very visceral. But you know, it was a hit or miss type of song, um, and and I, and I felt like it almost felt screechy at times. So I I gave this one a three point eight on five. Like it it really didn't hit me as hard as some of the rest of the record. This one is definitely one I would not listen to again for sure. But I just I don't want to say it's bad by any way because it's as good as. as, as I guess Bjork is. It's as good as it is? It's, yeah. It's as like good it's, as it is? Um, maybe if you're, like, really invested in the story. Like, I noticed with Kesha, when we reviewed her, a lot of people were highly invested in the story behind the Dr. Luke thing. So if we said anything that was, like, off rhythm for half a minute, being not so invested, like, the quality of the song might be related to that. And sometimes with these really personal tracks, 
the artist involvement with the story creates a certain level of passion that I just don't have enough information to fully care. Care is the right word. I don't care as much as I should about this one because it's not as universal a topic for at least me. It's universal for a lot of people in the sense of people dealing with this kind of struggle, but it's not something I've had to deal with. Speaking of which, Tabula Rasa. Yeah, that. Beating the fuck ups of the fathers. Every other song that swore it was like a fuck here or there. This track definitely said fuck enough to need the explicit lyrical content thingy on it and it just doesn't have it and i wonder i think you're talking about the last one no tabula rosa says fuck in every chorus and she says shit in the third verse really huh. yeah okay. so we're talking about this is the first one where really i'm gonna be like she gives some shits and she gives some fucks. so i'm just wondering how come if you're bjork you don't have to put the explicit lyrical thingy on spotify but every, anyway those were holding stocks because it's smart music I'm just, what are your thoughts on that? It's smart music. Like, what if a five-year-old, no, I don't give a shit. I think kids should be allowed to, like, deal with this shit. But what if that five-year-old with the super conservative parents starts singing Tabula Rosa? Probably a very unlikely scenario. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> Mom, have you heard this new jam? <laughs> Bjork. No. Um, so the first verse kind of shows uh, a him who I believe is, again, this is another double entendre song. This is Men of Earth. Yeah. Mixed with her specific man and his situation with the exact same subject matter of dealing with this kid. Right. And um, so we need a blank slate for the children to not repeat the fuck ups of her fathers. And then kind of like, you know, she wants us as men and her guy to have this transitionary process be as like painless as possible. Like she doesn't want us to have to suffer through this. But, like, except the fact that a lot of shit's... This is where she says the shit line. Right. It's going to, like, change because, I mean, basically what we're seeing in the world today is, for the first time, women might really get equality as this battle happens. We're still seeing it unfold. Right. And us men, it's going to be painful to give up the things that are required. Because people don't understand that when you're, you're dealing with equality, it means the bigger portion has to be, like, they have to lose... A little bit of shit to, to let the little people are get more right and so she if effectively kind of communicates that and the, the crux of the track is like look think about our children think about the future of this planet like let's not deal with the fuck ups of our father and wasn't it iceland who like kicked out the male politicians and replaced them all with women politicians to have like a better parliament after the Panama Papers and that scandal and shit. I don't know anything about that, but please let me know about that. I think that. it was them. I'm pretty um, sure it was Iceland. So you can even see how her political situation has reflections of this. Like her country has adopted, yeah, men fucked it up enough. Let's see what women can do. That's pretty fascinating. I'll be looking that up. Um, I, c I could be wrong. And if I am, sorry. I liked this song, but I also feel like there's... This is, this is like that rare time where I feel like the message kind of transcends the song. Yeah. So I'm actually, I'm going to withhold a grade on this one because uh, it's it's important, you know, like, like the song is really talking about the importance of, look, for a long time, a lot of men did a lot of things that went unpunished and unannounced and, you know, kind, kind of understood but it was just kind of accepted. Mr. And now, Weinstein. Yeah, at, at Al, you know? And now um, now there's kind of a reckoning happening. Uh, and I think, you know, it's very literal in the sense, the song is very literal in the sense that this is what's happening in her life personally, and this is also what's happening in the world. So she's she's talking about this 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 comparison between... I, I don't know if it's on this track, but somewhere on the album, she does imply that Buddy had a double life and was infidelitous in some way or another. <laughs> infidelitous. Um... <clears throat> I don't think she used that word. I just used that word. I'm, I'm speculating. She said double life, but... Uh, yeah. A anyway, um... So, I mean, this, I, you know, I'll, I'll give you a little bit, like, it wasn't my favorite song musically on the album, but message-wise, I think it's important that more artists release tracks like this, Agreed. I guess. Like, Especially women artists. Or, you know, men artists, male artists who have been abused. Or even, um, I'm, I'm going to take a time, a, a second here. There was a buddy of mine on Facebook who came out as, as this whole hashtag MeToo thing uh, was happening, and he came out and he said, look, I've, I've been 
this guy and I didn't realize I was this guy until a couple of women confronted me and and I feel like it's important that men should come out if they recognize that they've been pe- you know okay I was pe- totally that guy like, once upon a time back in the day like straight up when I was like 20 I did not understand what was appropriate behavior and then after some heartbreak and some harsh life lessons and and starting to listen specifically the key thing was to listen to the yeah. stories of women and how they feel when men do X, even down to like, I asked my girlfriend one time, if I like lean forward when I talk to you, how does that make you feel? Because for me, I'm passionate. I get fucking into things. She's like, it's a bit intimidating. And I'm like, shit, even leaning forward can be like aggressive. And you don't even understand the full length of how our conditioned behaviors might actually be like at a subconscious level, way more influential than even any of us are aware of. So. I, I just seen a video that triggered the question, but so many times, like when you when you try to fact check what the women are saying as a dude, you're just like, oh fuck, they have a way more bigger point than, like there's articles after articles you can read about like the life story. At 12, they treated me like this. At nine, they treated me like this. And as a guy, you just start feeling disgusting. Yeah. Cause yeah, we're kind of gross. And I think Bjork is laying that on proper here. So just for all of those reasons, I am not giving the song a grade. But I give it a four point two five. He gave it a four point two five. You can you can check it out on your own. It's, Let me know. It's like musically not my favorite, but and this is a great fucking song. And yeah. like we just had this whole chat with all of y'all on this Bjork review because of it. So hopefully it's did some real see talk it. and real shit. Um, so yeah, let us you know. Let me know what you think you would have given it, or if you wouldn't have given it. This is the first time you know I've been re- reviewing music for years. This is the first time I've ever refused to give a grade to a song. Uh, maybe uh, it's because it hit me in a way that like. You know what? This is some real shit. I think I think that regardless of of musical criticism or, or subjective uh, ideologies exists. or whatever, this this needs more shit like this needs to happen. Uh, having said that, claim stakers yeah. the next track. <laughs> so this claim staker song had a really cool upbeat bass line that was apparently made from vocal samples, from what the genius uh, note said. Okay. And um, it's bumping. I have so few notes on this. It's very nature-esque feeling. And the whole song is like she's come back into nature. So you get the feeling like she's left the city, come back up to some cabin in the woods type shit. And she's staking her claim. That is an amazing movie, by the way. Next Halloween, if you are looking for a horror movie to watch, Cabin in the Woods is, okay. is your best one. Heads so, down. So so she's just there, and it's like this little ballad to like nature. Of, I don't know if ballad's the right word, but just kind of that's it. It's the sh- it. one. Of, it's the shortest song with words on it, and it's that's it, yeah. It, it doesn't have all. It didn't do very very much for me, but the bass line did a hell of a lot for me, and it was fun to listen to. Um, I mean, I think you know it's a fourteen track album. I think we're also getting to a point where like it's not necessarily that the, the songs are, are starting to sound samey. But, but the, there's a lot of rep, there's a lot of repetition in terms of, of the sonic landscapes used see, and, and kind of like say that it's for me a matter of subject matter. We had this great and like vivid narrative all the way up into Loss, and then you have Sumi and Loss, Sumi and Tabula Rosa are almost all tied into the same subject, and then she just goes into the nature like this song, like like we already kind of touched on this a bit with Utopia, yeah, and I feel like at this point I don't know I feel like this nature song makes should have come after utopia for like or or after body memory maybe or something for the sake of the narrative of this album and i feel like its placement is weird to me and makes me lose a little bit of interest with the story that i've otherwise been completely captured with like this there's something about this record like like as much as it feels uh very thought out and and very meticulous like very meticulously crafted uh like every 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 part with its with its place some of it does feel very directionless and there is that that duality kind of going on throughout the record so some of these tracks uh feel like they're they're just kind of here as good as they are and even moments in in really good tracks you know things that I've that I've said that personally made me dog grades uh that that felt like they didn't need to be there but you know um this song, particularly, the one thing that I wrote was, uh, this is the catchiest soundtrack to the haunted house level in my favorite 8-bit video game. Nice. Like, that's that's what this song did for me. So I gave it a 4, just because... I it, gave it a, a 4.25, because that bass line had me hooked. 
in a way that worked for the entire fucking three twenty three minutes twenty seconds. It didn't go on too long, and I'm happy because like it didn't have the sub. It wasn't quite that, but it didn't have the substance, in my opinion, to carry it. Like it is exactly what it needed to be, which. I was kind of sad that we had this not five minute experience. I couldn't believe it. I can't believe I'm saying that, <laughs> but I've been blown out of the water by what she's done so far. And this was a little underwhelming. Um, anyway, I don't have more on that. Do you? No. Let's talk about Paradisia. Let's talk it. But this shit was a Disney movie. <laughs> um, she went into the forest in the last track and claimed her stakes, and she moved into her cabin in the woods, which is an excellent horror movie for your next Halloween. Do it. And then um, she proceeds... To, oh, that's that's actually encouraging. She then proceeds to um, walk through the woods, and the butterflies are there, and it's all cartoony, and, and like she's a Disney princess, and... I don't know. Like that's what I pictured. That that's all. It's it's like a minute and forty five seconds of flutes and composition of music with flutes and stuff and nature sounds and it's pretty. It's a great interlude on this album. It did very little for me as a human, but I also think it's really well composed and well made. And compared to some blander overtures and shit we may have encountered, this one was pretty fucking like or not overtures not like overture. interludes. But this could have been an overture. It, it could been have been at the beginning of the, of the but album. like it kind of has that feel to it and it's well done and it's beautiful in and of itself and i kind of feel neither direction about listening to this again if it ever comes on it it's okay but i'd have to be in a fucking strange mood to want to listen to this myself so four on five i mean it's strange because you know you don't think of classical music and that's what this track is it is straight up a classical composition it's it's, it's just a string composition like a string orchestral composition uh, again, very Vivaldi-ish, very flighty, very, you know, puts you in a good mood. Um, but I found myself thinking, I don't know what she would have done to make it longer. Like, it, I'm glad that it only was two minutes. Because hmm. um, she's already kind of done. And, you know, again, I came into this not knowing what she was going to do. So for me, she's already kind of done everything she could have done with this record. But, um, there's you still know, two, uh, two more. What'd there's still two it? more. I gave it a four on five. All right. I liked it. I enjoyed so, it. So Saint is uh, the next track. Mm-hmm. Music is the ultimate matriarch who gives empathy and love to everything from dying children to whatever else in the world. And Bjork is here to defend her as she reveals in the last line. Like she literally says, and I'm going to defend her. And up until that line, I loved the song actually. <laughs> I thought it was really cool. Like it really was like, Music's the ultimate, like music's the the great healer, the great connector. The and I've always believed that music is one of the most powerful essences. So when I see everyone in the streets protest, and I'm like, yo, if y'all just made music, we change the world a lot quicker. Holden's thoughts on the value of an effective protest: write songs. See how that doesn't. You know, that's just my thoughts. Maybe I'm wrong, but if we all took on the music labels with awesome music, we could create a renaissance along with other artists and and change the world. And so music's powerful, and I agree with that. And help, matriarchs. I'm cool with that. Let music be a woman. Let music be this beautiful essence of healing and awesomeness because we are totally not that, as was established on Tabula Rosa. Cool with that. Oh, that's great. But what, like Bjork coming in at the last line and being like, and I'm here to protect her or whatever she says, I don't know. That was a little, it sit a little weird with me. Aside from that, this song is excellent. Like, it's a conceptually brilliant track. Um, I... I don't know. I guess we're in the woods and she's already like essentially made that nature is the natural music of life. And she had this idea of mother nature, music, blah, blah, blah. And it makes sense. So I don't know how it fits into the album anymore. I feel like we're on a new album. It's kind of, it sounds like it belongs on this album, but conceptually we're somewhere else than we were like four tracks ago. And it, it feels weird. Again, this one, it just feels weird because of what's in the next track. So ultimately... I'm left with a four, four on five on this. It's not a bad song, but it's totally... There's a few things that actually kind of got under my skin a little bit compared to it. And it's not because music is a lovely woman, matriarchal figure, etc. I'm totally down with that part. It was just kind of Bjork seems a little arrogant at the end there and, and shit like that. And weirdly placed on this album. I don't know. It just felt weird so to I guess get to that track at this point after everything. Like, she's she's talking about music. Music is the saint, right? It's like saint yeah. music. Because um, I, I don't know. I felt like this might have been a double entendre, too. Like, she was talking about someone 
or something. Like, I got a lot of... I don't know if York is a religious person. Maybe. Um, you know, I got I got a lot of, of, of more... I got a lot more personification. Um, or, or what's the word when you attribute human oh, qualities to anthropomorphizing right 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 um so she you know she was kind of doing that to music but i got a lot more of a physical description of a person through through this through this track so i thought maybe it was it was a double entendre she I was talking about someone like, the, like the spirit of the forest kind of anthropomorphizing however you say that word i said it right the first time you did but kind of like 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 in the sense of an essence or a spirit not like a literal maybe you're right like i don't, I don't think I'm, i don't actually get this one as deeply um, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I could have been wrong other, other than that. I mean, eh, it's a four for me. There was something else I wanted to say. Do you remember what it is? I don't. I'm so I'm going to give this a four and yeah. we're coming to the end. So it's a uh, future forever and maybe in the future you'll remember. Maybe. Sid, okay. why don't you tell us what you remembered in the future? I get it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I remembered, and and as as I'm listening to this album all the way through, you know, there's there's some nagging at me like this is reminding me of something that I laughed at in the past, and and like it's a very serious record, and like I I do take it seriously, even though you know she's got some tongue in cheek moments that that are cute and funny, but um, this is about I Saint, remember right? that my first real introduction to Bjork was a Saturday Night Live skit making fun of her. It was a Celebrity Jeopardy skit and Winona Ryder was was playing Bjork and basically every answer to, to any question she would she would give would be Everything is music and Alex Trebek would keep coming back to her and she'd be like tapping on on on, on her podium or like doing something ridiculous and she's like this is music and a lot of this record and that's not fair, <laughs> but a lot of this record is very much that. Um, and so that last uh, track... Especially that last track. Especially that last track was exactly that. So I couldn't help but laugh, you know what I mean? And subliminally, that was kind of in my head. So maybe that was tainting my opinion of a lot of these songs, uh, okay. which, again, isn't fair. I never watched SNL, so I know... And I still don't, I, so I don't have that tainted memory. Will Ferrell as Alex Trebek is some of that classic shit. Um, um, but this track, Future Forever, is um, it's a little bit about visualizing. Okay, it's every self-help book you've ever wanted to read or seen people reading in one song. Yeah. And so I actually annotated some of the genius lyrics because it seems stupid that no one had done so yet. I know it's been up for two days, but come on, that first fucking lyrics were so obvious. Come like, on, bro. Bro, come on, bro. Imagine a future and be in it. So what I took from this line, as you can see on Genius.com, is uh, visualize your future and Are you, you can link make to it that? reality. Uh, no, it's fine. You can. You're not gonna link to your annotations on the no, Genius. I'm not gonna do that. That seems too much. I'd rather you go click on my album. That's linked below. Uh, feel this incredible na nurture and soak it in. Or is it nurture? I thought it was nature. Shit, I fucked up. Is it nature versus nurture? Is that Either what you way. meant to say? I, I fucked up my annotation. I thought I said nature. Oh, well. So feel this incredible nurture still. She, she like, embracing it. She's soaking it in. Your past is on loop. Turn it off. See this possible future and be in it. Like, stop ruminating on the bullshit of your past. It's holding you back. And when you finally stop doing that loop, you up in the future times and you can start visualizing. And it kind of goes on from there. And, um... It's kind of like a bit of a final farewell to the past, the shit she's dealt with, her man, and creating like this new thing for herself that, uh, and, and it's nice. It's got this like pleasant feel to it. It's, it's a little calmer, but I'm okay with that as a last track. I feel like it gives you this sense of finality and considering this whole album seems to be her quest to find her personal utopia, to realize that it exists in this future that she could create for herself, it, it's a pretty fitting fucking end thematically to everything. Like, I may not have dug, like, the whole thing of the second half of this album as much, but this track is, is, is fucking excellent and, and puts it together properly. It gives you this nice, sweet feel inside. A lot of the same kind of vibe as... I mean, I have nothing more to contribute musically at this point. It's more different stuff than I'm used to, but I like this one more, and I give it a four and a half on five. Uh, I had mixed feelings on this one because it, like, it does work as a closer. Uh, it fits 
you know, musically, thematically, conceptually with, with the rest of the record. Uh, this one is a little bit more tangential. Is that a word? Tangential? Can I say that? Intangential? Uh, I know what you're trying to say. It's a little bit more of a tangent, <laughs> uh, lyrically and musically, than, than some, of the, some of the rest of the tracks, which is saying something. Um, and I'm not usually a fan of those train of thought types of that that type of art in general like like I'm not a, I'm not a fan of, of the type of film that doesn't finish uh, and that that doesn't really have a plot it's kind of meandering right. uh, and it's this is the type of song that that is um, and I get I get that it's that it's looking forward to the future so there is no finish you know what I mean like I'll Again, on on a lot of these complaints that I'm making, I understand. So I feel like th- what they're what they're doing is just not my thing. So, and this is the you know this is the most subjective review that I've done because again, what the fuck am I supposed to say about Bjork? Um, it's not necessarily my thing. I gave this song a four on five. Like it's it's a cool finisher, but it. I just I just want to touch on the idea of closure. I think her closure is she can put the past behind her and focus on the future. And this and whole that's album fine. has been to close that door of her life. It's almost like this album makes sense if you think about how the last album was the opposite of this album, which we don't know because we haven't really listened to. But I saw some shit on Google that told me that shit. <laughs> anyway. Brief um, research. This record didn't surprise me in the sense that this is what I was expecting from Bjork knowing what I knew about her we're talking about the whole album now the whole album in general okay. yeah um I like I I enjoyed it it was it was a fascinating experience uh it's not your typical anything really um that there's nothing you can really compare it to except maybe older Bjork records again I wouldn't know Please don't hate me for it. I may or may not go and check her out. I'm not enthused about going to check out Bjork after this. I'm pretty um, enthused. He's probably going to go do it. Uh, unless we end up reviewing another Bjork record. I, this is probably my last venture into her back catalog. But, you know, don't don't let my opinion of it color yours. You may you may really yeah, find I something mean, you enjoy. Because, again, Utopia on this record, like, I get... There, there's a couple of songs on this record that I really, really liked. But it's... I just, look, it's totally worth just saying. This is... This is not your regular record. Like we, especially as North Americans and et cetera, we're conditioned to what's dope yeah. based on a series of math equations. And it's often like she throws the math out the window. She throws all the regular rules out the window and creates something. I give this album a 4.44 or something like that. And the reason for that is because it's truly fucking exceptional. But like, I don't love it the way I love other albums I've given higher marks to, and that's where the subjective side kicks in. But this is one of the most impressive musical experiences I've ever given. Like, I don't think this shit would get a Grammy nomination because of how close-minded we... She's gotten... uh... I looked it up. Very few Grammy nominations. Oh, well, fuck the Lots Grammys, of anyway. other... Like, she's won every Icelandic music award that's ever been around her album <laughs> release, but... So whatever their one is called, like ours is the Junos... But uh, probably the Grammys with like a weird accent. (laughs) Ultimately, like I dig this experience. And so I don't know that I'm going to like go back to this as a music, but I'm enthused to experience more of what Bjork is because as a a songwriter type person, I love the fact that she doesn't care about the rules. Yeah. And that is super appealing to me because I want to know how to properly not care about the rules, not just take risks that are uncalculated. Every risk she took was calculated, even if we didn't necessarily like them around. And she knew what she was doing. She had such a firm handle on it. So few musicians on this planet can probably touch the level of and it's cool understanding because if, she has. If you are the type of person who likes to put on a record and close your eyes and kind of use the music to visualize whatever, this this is a cool record for that. Like you will get a lot of very stunning visuals uh, just just listening to the music if if you have you know if you have an imagination and you're into that. Um, not to say that if you, if you can't, you don't have an imagination. Like I said, this, this record is not my cup of tea, but I was, I was able to, to sit back and to really let the music wash over me. Yeah. Uh, especially on some of the longer dancer tracks. Um, there's a really strong sense of visuals and she really does do a very good job of illustrating. It's, it's almost like she's using a paintbrush, but with, 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 with a, with a musical staff. Uh, so what did you give it? I gave this a 4.2 altogether. It's not it's gonna dope. make my top 10 favorite records of the year, but it is one of the most interesting records of the year. It's probably sure. one of the most 
impressive displays of talent I've encountered, but talent isn't necessarily stuff I'm going to go listen to every day. Exactly. Um, anyway, thank you all for watching this. Um, thank you. If, if you're a real big Bjork fan and want to educate us, feel free in the comments. That's what they're there for, and we love it. Um, remember, if you also then throw in a like, you're in the contest, but you then also have to subscribe. So I hope you don't hate us. And, and you have to say something anyway. relevant. Yeah, um, but really, if we want your honest opinions and your feelings, we're not going to take it personal. We know we were way in way over our head for this one, but I generally am happy with how this just went. I think we we approached Bjork the way ignorant people should, with an open mind, willing to experience the essence of Icelandic awesomeness. So if you're going to come up and just say Bjork sucks, you're probably not going to win a hundred dollars. And if you do think Bjork sucks, I'm going to think that you hadn't really listened to Bjork. No, no, but you can say, let us know why. Yeah. Give us, give us, a, give us a real and, and opinion. Even if you, you know? don't give a shit about the contest, just tell us why anyway. Yeah. Maybe you win a hundred bucks. Maybe. But like the video. Or a anyway. hundred thousand yenny. Yeah. All right. Anyway, um, we'll uh, come back again with another review next week. I didn't look at who's coming, so I'm not sure. And we'll try to pick something more rocky.